Good morning. Thank you for joining us here at Unity of Walnut Creek. It's great to have you with us. We are journeying into a deeper experience of maybe some of the surprising elements of the Christmas season. The important thing in this journey is that it supports you in that touching the beauty of the spiritual being you are at depth. Thank you for joining us. Remain seated and join us in singing the first Noel. The first Noel the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields where they lay.
Will you please join me in turning to the camera and waving hello to all of our friends at home? We are happy to have you joining us. We appreciate your presence and you add to our spiritual community. If you are new to our services, a very special welcome to you this morning. We are glad that you have chosen to join us. Unity is a path, a positive path for spiritual living. Here we celebrate the magnificence of the spiritual being we each are. It is our sincere desire to empower our spiritual growth by teaching and modeling the beautiful universal spiritual principles of being. Our focus is on universal spiritual truths. So today you may hear music and teachings from different spiritual paths. They express the many different perceptions of the divine. Now let's open our service with the power of affirmative prayer as we attune to this divine presence in which we live and move and have our being. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And again, there is, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And this time, close your eyes and really connect with your heart as we say it together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. We want to thank everyone who has joined us this past week in our spiritual focus, which was, my heart is as open as the sky. Today, as our guest musician, we are blessed and delighted to have with us Mark Martinez. And as our service unfolds, we invite you to touch at a deeper level than ever before the beauty and the magnificence of your own spiritual nature. Please remain seated and join us in singing O Little Town of Bethlehem.
that deep breath through your heart. Wiggle around, get comfortable as we settle in and turn towards that beautiful center of being within your heart. We begin our time of prayer and meditation together. And we have the music to guide us on that journey to the center of the heart. that awareness of this infinite love in which we dwell. This presence that flows in and through our lives. This love that expresses as our lives. This powerful flow divine love that expresses the spiritual beings that we really are. Mother, Father, God, as we turn within, as we reach to know you more deeply, we're grateful that you awaken us. We get to see your goodness, your presence, your love expressed in everything around us. And the beauty of nature. In that delightful wisdom and presence of everyone in our families. and How easy it is to see it in friends. What a delight it is to feel this divine presence expressing through children. Bringing forth the delights in our hearts. Oh, beloved presence. Open us to know how deeply we are loved. In this moment, I choose to be receptive to divine love. I choose to release all that limits my vision so that I might see the great love that pours itself into my life and as my life. In this moment, I am loved. I am loved. I am. And that love takes me to that place of pure being to rest in stillness one 
with the one. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. still and know you beloved presence infinite love we're so grateful to know that we are one with this love that we can send it forth to heal and bless and uplift and so we make this choice to radiate this love from our hearts to send it to touch and heal. And we begin with our own bodies, sending this love to every cell and system to bring them into radiant fullness of their purpose and harmony with that divine plan that expresses in our lives. We send this love to mind and heart for wisdom and understanding. We radiate it to enfold each one dear to us as we hold them in this love, we know that they are lifted, blessed, healed, guided, prospered, and they grow in divine peace. We send this love from our hearts across the spiritual community, blessing each person and flowing to touch everyone in their lives. We radiate this love from our hearts we send it to every prayer request brought here and we know with each you are enfolded in divine love and lifted to that which is the highest. And we send this love. We send it across the communities in which we live. We send it across our nation and the nations of the world calling forth the presence of peace in all hearts. And we radiate this love. We send it to all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillside. 
For in seeking to know you, we are all one. This love radiates from our hearts. It enfolds this beautiful earth in which we live. It touches and brings harmony to all its systems. It blesses all of its creatures. And it enfolds the earth to touch the heart of every single person. For you are that love in every heart. And in that love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again, Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. I know that your plan for me is right, and I need you to fulfill your purpose in my life. I submit to you. all to you 
I surrender my life and give it all to you. Christmas came early, Mr. Mark Martinez, everybody. My name's Javier Cortez, and it's truly my pleasure to highlight a few of the many upcoming activities here at Unity. We are still collecting warm clothing for the homeless, and we have extended the date to next Sunday. Details on clothing being collected are in today's bulletin. Join us Monday for a magical evening as we share our favorite Christmas songs with our friends and family at the Kensington Retirement Home on Gary Road. Our Unity children have created a very special Christmas Eve service. Parents and children will greet you as you enter and joyous Christmas carols will begin our time together. The children's service begins at 5.30. At the eight o'clock service, the music will call angels to join us and you will feel the touch of their peace on your heart. Find out about more of these and other activities in your bulletin and on our websites. So now, until you hear the gong, please take a short moment to greet the people immediately around you. Good morning, everyone. Is everybody doing good? It's great to hear. I'm doing, I'm doing great. Um, it's really great to be able to sing for you all this morning. I haven't really been doing a lot of singing this past year, so this is a huge treat for me. Um, and most of you that know me know that I am a theater singer. Though. I love musicals. I do musical theater, quite a bit of it. And the one thing I like about musical theater is there are so many songs in a show that actually work outside of a show and are so truly inspiring. So today, my theme in sharing some songs with you is um, uh, Broadway songs that are inspirational. So I hope you like them. If you Within your heart, you'll know that no one can change the path that you must go. Believe what you feel and know you're right because the time will come around when you say it's yours believe that you can go home believe you can float on air 
Then click your heels three times if you believe. Then you'll be there. Believe in yourself right from the start. Believe in the magic that's inside your heart. Believe all these things, not because I told you to, but believe in yourself as I believe in you. Believe there's a reason to be. Believe you can make time stand still. And you'll know this from the moment you try. If you believe, I know you will. Believe in yourself right from the start. You'll have brains and you'll have a heart. You'll have courage to last your whole life through if you believe in yourself if you believe in yourself just believe in yourself as I believe in you Ready to believe? Yes. All right. <laughs> well, first thing that's easy to believe is that this place is filled with amazing talent. Everybody who came last night is a believer. So thank you. Thank you to our choir for the wonderful experience last night and our party and everything. Wow. And I want to play with your belief a little bit today. Because I want to take you into a place that I believe is one of the most spiritual experiences in the Christmas season. And yet, sometimes we have to look a little closer to discover the amazing spiritual presence that's there. I, I kind of figure it this way. So if, if, if we go in our imagination back through time a little bit, okay, and we, we hang out there at the point where intention was being set in motion to create a spiritual experience. Okay, so we may have had the, you know, Angel Committee on Divine Education together or something like that, okay? And they're looking and saying, so what are we going to do? What are we going to put to, to really pe help people wake up to this divine experience, to experience this presence of God? And so they began to put things together and said, well, it's pretty easy to know where to start. If you're going to have an experience of the divine, it's going to be in your heart. So we've got to get folks in their heart. Now, the easiest way to do that is with children. Okay, we all kind of, kind of have our stuff around adults. But we can drop most of it for the kids. Okay, so, so we'll focus on the kids. And one of, the, one of the things that brings us into the experience with the children is giving gifts. Okay, so we can give gifts to children. And that would help people move not only into their hearts, but it would give them an experience of the divine because it is the nature of the divine to give. I was going to say Jesus said, but let me be more honest. The Gospels say that Jesus said. <laughs> and and so, so he's talking with folks, and he's trying to get this idea, it looks like, uh, across where, okay, 
It is this nature of God to express goodness. And so he says to the uh, folks he's talking to, for their own experience as well, if, if you've got a child that asks for bread, you aren't going to give them a stone. That's a, then it goes on, if you then, though you were evil, thank you, <laughs> uh, these translators, you got to, anyway, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those that ask him? In other words, that is the nature of the divine to give. So, if we go into that experience of gifts to children, we are expressing that nature of the divine. Beautiful, beautiful thing to set in motion. Now, the other thing that happens when you give is it's hard to stop. Okay, if you start giving, everybody wants to give. So suddenly, there you are, and everybody starts giving to everybody else because it's that nature. Remember, remember when you were little and Christmas began to change from that experience of getting the gift until you suddenly found you could give? And you began picking out things for brothers and sisters and moms and dads. And Remember that? Was that fun? Yeah, that, you were kind of stepping up into that. So that's that, that beautiful power that we have. Now, that is an experience of the divine. That experience of giving. But if, we, if we're going to do this giving thing and really have people uh, uh, experience the divine, we're going we're gonna to need a symbol. That's kind of how we, choose, how we teach in spiritual education. Is we generally use symbols to have people identify. And we're kind of locked in on the symbol. Okay, because ever since Michelangelo did the Sistine Chapel, we've got this grandfather figure, you know. We've got this guy with the beard. And so we'll, we'll have to go with that. There's... There's other things, but, uh, you know, we aren't trying to make this hard. We're trying to make it easy. So, so we'll go with the grandfather figure to be a symbol of this divine experience. But we're going to have to do better than black robes. Boring. Okay, and so what we're set in motion here, we want to have life. We want to have energy, and no more of this white purity. Okay, it's got to be able to relate. So if we're going to express life, vitality, what color would we use? Red, red of course. So we got a grandfather figure in a, in clothed in red now because there's you metaphysicians who are going to hang around. Okay, we've got to take care of you too. So we'll trim it in white so you understand the impurity of intention and all that is still there. Okay. So we've got this... Uh, giving of gifts from this, this grandfatherly symbol, dressed in red, and of course we, we should probably do it at Christmas time because that is a celebration of the experience of giving. Now, there's something we need to work on here. We're talking about divine education. We're not talking about religious education. There's a difference. Okay, the religion, they're a little, they tend to be a little obsessed with Jesus at Christmas time. Understandable. But we got to get beyond that. Okay, because the message that's there isn't just about Jesus. As wonderful as that is, and as beautiful as the consciousness of love and awakening that he brought to humankind. For those children, how important is it for no, for them to realize that they are just as special as he was. So it goes to all the children. 
at Christmas time. Think that would work? Okay. Now, we're going to have to deal with some issues here because we've got a problem. When you express the divine, what people experience is the effect of the divine. They experience the gift of the divine. And most don't recognize the divine itself. They don't recognize that's the experience I'm having. So how you do that is you have that symbol show up at night. So they don't really get to see the divine. They get to see the gifts of the divine. Okay. Now, as, as we grow, we get so that we recognize and see eye to eye, that divine presence ever more clearly around us. But we're working with kids here, okay? So we can start with nighttime, that figure, that symbol comes, brings gift to the children. And of course, the place to bring them is in the home. Because it's the symbol of care. It's the symbol of warmth and, and love of the place that is the child's world. Now, we could have them delivered in the kitchen. But we may have some trouble with the cooks. Okay, showing up Christmas morning with the kitchen filled full of presents. So, how about the fireplace? Fireplace is a symbol of the heart. Okay, it is that light and warmth that spreads through the house. Okay, so that the heart becomes the place where the divine presence enters and expresses. It also takes care of another problem we've got. We are talking about higher consciousness here expressing. So we're going to have to do the vertical thing. Okay, now... We can do that with the chimney. Okay, we've got access to higher consciousness. Okay, so we can bring that in. We've got, we've got that higher consciousness descending into the experience of, of the child's world. That work? Okay, now, if we're going to do this, we've got to have a location other than heaven, folks. That's really getting trite. Okay. Some place that's far enough away that the kids don't really think they can get there, but it has, to, it has to work as far as there's a real place that exists. Any suggestions? North Pole, North Pole that works. Sure, and it takes it. So we also know then if we're going to have a delivery system from the snow and ice of the North, North Pole, we'll have to use a sleigh. Flying horses has already been done. Greek mythology did that for their god symbols. So we'll have to throw that out. Penguins aren't really in yet. <laughs> so reindeer work? Okay, we can, do, we can do reindeer, sleigh, flying, and of course, you know what makes all this happen. You know what makes it fly. Do you know what overcomes all the questions about chimneys and fireplaces? It's magic. The magic is the love. That's what makes it all work. There's another part here, though. We're talking about a divine teaching. We're talking about how we, as spiritual beings here in the earth, Experience the divine, this nature of giving, this nature of infinite love. And so there's, there's a part here where we have to step into co-creation. Okay, there's a part here where we have to step into asking. Because the child would begin to recognize that they open to receive. So we'll have to get them to do Christmas lists. I don't think that'll be hard, do you? Now... So we, we've got the pieces kind of coming together that could evolve into quite an experience. Um, 
there's a problem that comes up. This is going to have a whole lot to do with parents. Now, my experience of parents has been that they tend to generally have control issues around their children. Okay. Now, maybe that wasn't true for you. But most parents tend to have, so they're probably going to kind of do that naughty and nice thing. You know, yes, you can't, no, you can't, you might not get, you know, that, that sort of thing. Now, they're going to do it. But we are bringing about a greater education because that is not the truth. The truth is the goodness of God is available to you no matter how naughty you are. And some of you have put that to the test. <laughs> and it was probably a lot of fun. <laughs> And you are loved completely no matter what you do. And the same is true. It has nothing to do with how good we are or what we do. You are loved because you are a child of God. You are loved because you are. That's all it takes. If we set that consciousness in motion. There won't be a parent who cannot express that generosity on that morning. Fair enough. Now, somewhere along here, we're going to have this symbol. We're going to have to give this symbol a name. Any suggestions? No, it's like Santa. Santa Claus. I'll go with Santa Claus. Yeah, St. Nick's a little old. It'll, they'll pass it up, I think. I think they'll stick with Santa Claus as, as, as time evolves. So, we, so we've got this Santa Claus figure, a God figure, a symbol of the divine that gives because you are, that loves you as you are that expresses divine abundance into your life. If we get touched by the awareness that we are loved regardless, what an amazing experience of the divine that would be. But there's something else going to happen here. And it is probably, for most of us, the greatest teaching of all. When that child writes their list, they'll be writing it to Santa Claus at the North Pole. Just as when a child prays to God, they understand God as something in heaven that you ask to help you, like you ask your mother and father or grandpa and grandma to be there and take care of you. And what a sacred, beautiful understanding that is. But as that child grows into adulthood, they begin to understand that they are Santa Claus. They are one with a consciousness of love and of giving. And that the truth and the power of it is not someone else's. It's theirs. As we grow in our understanding of God, We begin to change our understanding from somebody out there in heaven or the North Pole to that which expresses in and through us and in and through all these amazing spiritual beings that are around us. 
and in and through all of life. And it expresses as we express it. Love is as we love. Generosity in abundance is as we express generosity in abundance. It is an unlimited abundance because it is divine. It is yours. And that love flows through us to touch others. And we create a magic of love in the earth. A time when we experience God whether we know it or not. Fair enough. One of the things that happens as we overcome this, uh, some of the limitations, you know, where you want to do the good and bad on the giving, as as that Santa Claus spirit moves again and again, we begin to see beyond it. I love the experience of uh, discovering that uh, video in a coffee, coffee shop caught a man stealing from the tip jar. So people in the coffee shop looked at the video and said, what are we going to do? Naughty guy. They decided put the video on the web and tell the guy that what they'd done in response was to ask everybody to contribute for him. Because if you had to take from people who weren't earning very much at all, you must have great need. And it is the choice of that divine presence to respond abundantly. flows through us. And one of the things that I love about Santa Claus is it may be Christmas time, but it's not about religion. One of my favorite experiences of Christmas is discovering a man, his name is Jay Frankton. And Jay was a, uh, he's Jewish, and he, so he was raised in a Jewish household. And in his household, there was not very much of that Santa stuff. His, his, his dad wasn't very comfortable with it. And so he decided when he had his own household and his own children, it had a gorgeous Christmas tree, and it had lots of presents. And then he discovered the power of Santa Claus. He discovered that power of divine flow and love and giving and the opportunity to create a different consciousness in that moment. And so he went down to the U.S. post office and he went to that place where they take those letters that are sent to Santa Claus and he began opening them and reading them. And he came across a number that expressed a household where there was little chance of a deep Santa experience. And so he wrote back. And he said, Christmas Day, and he set a time, I'll be there at your house. Got your letter. Love, Santa. <laughs> and for 12 years, He showed up at those houses. Red suit, bag of toys, and he always had some extra because he found there, were, there would be some kids going in or coming out that probably hadn't received the Christmas that their heart desired. One of the last trips that he made. He was with a family of four kids who'd sent in their Christmas letters and he showed up at their house and shared the gifts and they were amazed. Of course, their parents were really amazed. And there was a little girl in the 
back of the room, and she was just kind of watching him. Okay, and he looked at her, and he looked at the family, and he called her over, and he said, you aren't part of this family, are you? And she said, no. He said, did Santa bring you anything for Christmas? He said, no. And she leaned in and whispered in his ear, I'm Jewish. <laughs> and he said, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> and she went home with presents that Christmas. Okay. This is a divine experience. I'm so glad that Spirit was smart enough to enroll the commercial world to make it easy for us. Okay. It's not commercialization. It's all spiritualization. That's the only thing that's real. And the choice is, will we be that expression of divine love? Will we let Santa, the real Santa, that divine presence, live through us? Santa lives through me. Join me. Santa lives through me. Isn't it wonderful? Again, Santa lives through me. Again, Santa lives through me. What a joy. What an experience of a divine presence and love. And remember, there's no conditions. You are totally and completely loved, just as you are. And it's infinite abundance. So quit being responsible with your budget. <laughs> okay, let it flow. You are the expression of divine love. What a gift from the consciousness of the universe that we would have such a glorious opportunity to give full expression to it. I am so grateful that Santa lives through you. Bless you. If you would like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, please ask our heart ministers. They will be available after the service here in the sanctuary or on the patio. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. And I'm going to uh, join Javier here for a moment in the part of our service where we fill out our connection cards, invite you to take the cards out. And I just wanted to say thank you. This is uh, a new experience for us, and everyone has been so helpful and cooperative, the wanted to share with you that as a result of the cards, which one of our primary purposes was really to give people the opportunity to express their prayer requests. Every week we are now paying, praying with well over 100 people. Thanks to your sharing with us and letting our heart ministers and our prayer teams uh, work in support of you and the people in your hearts. So thank you for that and for joining us in our spiritual focus. Okay, this week, Santa lives through me. Join me. Santa lives through me. Now, I also want to encourage you to 
we've, we've got these barrels out here for warm clothing and there's a barrel for food. Let's Santaize it and just have them overflowing next weekend. And, and we have a basket for gift cards. Checks. Basket for gift card checks that uh, go to uh, help people in need. So uh, let's just let it, let it flow. Thank you for taking the time to do the cards. And remember, if, if you're in Unity Connects, all you need to put on is your name. And if, uh, particularly if it's new, it's such a wonderful chance for us to respond and connect with you. We really appreciate the information and letting us know that on the card. So thank you for letting Santa live through you, and a little bit through the card, Santa live through us. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend David. It's now time for our prosperity celebration. For credit card donations or love in action, there are envelopes provided in the back of each chair. One of the great teachings of abundance is the Jesus teaching. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be, will be poured onto your lap. We celebrate that outpouring of divine love in each of our lives. I now invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hand and be aware. Be aware that God is the source of all your good. Repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I'm truly grateful. This is the moment, this is the day, when I send all my doubts and demons on their way. Every endeavor I have made ever are coming into play, are here and now today. This is the moment. This is the time when the momentum and the moment are in rhyme. Give me this moment, this precious chance. I'll gather up my past and make some sense at last. This is when all I've done, all of the dreaming, scheming, and screaming become one. This is the day. See it sparkle and shine. When all I've lived for. Now the time has come to prove to them I've made it on my own. This is the moment, my final test. Destiny beckons, I never reckon second best. I won't look down, I must not fall. This is the moment, the sweetest moment of them all. This is the moment, damn all the odds. This day or never, I'll sit forever with the gods. When I look back, 
I will always recall This is the moment The greatest moment The greatest moment of them all Please, we are all blessed to have such wonderful musicians, so please show them some love. Thank you. Thank you all. Santa's, let's do a blessing here on our children together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. The light of God shines through you. And let's stand and take hands and share together our prayer of protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And our peace song. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. the love and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun!